Welcome back to uh, Python with Andrew. And I'm going to do another example using classes and objects. Uh, a lot of that is because I think it needs you need a lot of practice in this area of classes and objects. Uh, and it's always good to have good, simple, short type of uh, examples. In this case, I'm going to do a simple example using employees. Uh, and my employees have a department and the department has a manager. And in this one, I want to talk about the connection between uh, the object or the class slash object data type and maybe a relational uh, database uh, and see how that connected. Because you often think, is it the same? Is it different? And the answer is really, it can be either. So let's jump over and uh, have a look what I've got. So as I mentioned, I've got, in this case, I'm going to do a simple one, three. I have an employee. I have a department and I have a manager um, of that department. And the kinds of attributes I'm going to do is employee is going to have an ID, a staff ID maybe, um, a name, a date of birth, a salary, a title, and uh, what department they're in. And the department's going to have a department ID. In fact, let me call it a bit more consistent there. Um, let me call that department. D, small D, and uh, and managers are going to have an employee uh, ID, where all their details are, but also the department that they're managing. So it's fairly simple structure. And if we were doing this exactly like this, it would probably meet up nicely with a good relational database schema. And that's not a bad thing. In fact, when we do some work later on on SQL and Python, uh, I'll spend a lot of time doing database um, and, and defining the relationships and, and doing entity relationship model, talking about them a bit uh, because they're a good starting point. So imagine that we did that in this particular case and you'll see how it marries up quite nicely. So I'm going to start off with, um, I'm going to define our department. And in the department, I'm going to have an initialization function. Um, and I'm going to give it an ID, a name, and a location. We could have lots and lots more to do with um, department we're defining there. We could have a lot more to do with uh, departments, but this will do. Self dot uh, department ID equal self dot location. Okay, and I'm going to have a quick uh, print. Department and it's going to print the name, actually, the department dot dot department ID, uh, self dot. Name and self dot location, and let me put self in there. I know it's not going to be very pretty, but at least allows us to see what we have. So, um, so now let's let's go and create a department. So depart one equals department um, it. So the, the ID is one IT and it's in the main building. Oops, main, let me spell it correctly. And then I'm going to do department one dot print department. Okay, so let's see if that uh, works and creates a nice simple, it does, as you do, not be surprised. 
and I'm going to create department two, uh, department two, and it's going to be marketing, and it's also in the main building. In department three, and this is going to be finance. This is in building two, okay? And uh, I would be better off if I actually had this in a list, but um, I'm just going to just select department three just to make sure that it is working, and it is finance building, building two. Okay, so that's my department. So I've created the uh, class, got a couple of methods in there, a few attributes, and now I'm creating objects. And I've got three objects for my company. Okay, and then I want to create the employee class. Uh, class, and I'm actually going to copy this one here because it's going to look very similar to that. Last time I did this, so I made lots of spelling mistakes. So, so we're going to do employee employee ID. It's got a name. Uh, it's got a date of birth and salary title and the department ID. Okay. Uh, self dot. Uh, Self dot name, self dot dob equals dob. Self dot salary. Self dot title. And self dots uh, department ID equals department ID. Now I've left that as a department ID because if I was matching a database uh, and it would come across as a, a number, the ID. And we'll see in a minute, I'm actually going to change that to be not th that, but I'm actually going to change it to be the actual department. Um, because, and now if I employee one equals employee, employee number one, two, well, let's start at 100. Uh, the name is Fred. Date of birth of Fred is the first, the first of 1970. Just picking that as a random. Fred's going to be our manager in a minute. Um, and his salary is 35000 Nice salary. And he's going to be IT manager. And the department he's in um, is the department number one. Right? And you can see that uh, with this, let me actually create a um, to print. Print uh, employee. Self dot EID, self dot name, self dot um, title, and self dot department. ID. Oh, I worry about the others, but um, let's just see if that works on that. So I've created one employee, and now I'm going to do employee one dot print employee. Let's see what happens. All right. So I've created one employee who's an IT manager, and uh, it's in in department one. And if I clear that out, it should show me that Fred is an IT manager in number one. Uh, so 
that's the normal way we would do this if we were going to ma marry it up with um, a relational schema. And if we had, I, I could have added the manager one on there, but I don't need to. But the difficulty of this is from a programming point of view, we've just got this number one, the department ID, which we sort of have to know from our database. Okay. So wouldn't it be good if we just didn't use one, but we actually use the department they were in, right? Um, so I'm going to rename these variables here because department one didn't sound too exciting. So I'm going to call it IT department, marketing department, and finance department. Just just to make it a bit easier. And this one I'm going to print in, okay? Now, again, those variables are not that useful. Uh, but what it means is down here, I can change this from being that one, which means that I know, and I'm going to change it to an IT department, all right? Um, and now, if we see what happens when we do this, I'll keep the other one up there just to show you. Uh, you'll see that um, we've got our building to, but this time Fred's a manager of the IT, the IT manager, but instead of being one, it's the actual object um, of, uh, of Fred. Right? So why that's useful is we're now linking that. It's a lot easier for us now if we wanted to, after the employee, do print employee, we did employee, one um, dot department ID dot print department. All right. So if we wanted to find out the actual department, we just it's a lot easier to reference because it's directly there. We don't have to look up that number one or go through a loop and look it up. All we need to do is go um, employee the department number print department. And now if I, I do this, uh, you'll see that it underneath it, it will tell us the actual department there. Uh, and in fact, I could change this print um, self dot department ID. I could change this to um, department ID dot print department. So I could change that within the print employee. So it prints the employee and then also prints on up the, the department as well. And let me just change that. So let's see what happens now if I do that. So you can see that uh, we've got our earlier ones, uh, but now we've got underneath it instead of, oh, well, we've got none there, but uh, it shouldn't be none. It should be the, um, the department underneath it, okay? Not too sure why it's saying none and not the actual. I think because I've got a new line there, so it's not printing there. That's fine. I think what I need to do is actually just stop the print there and then just go self dot um, department ID. Okay, so I'll print the employee first. Um, so let me, let me make it a bit clearer. Employee. Details, and then I would print. And up here, I would print the department details. So hopefully, if I'm just going to take that, clean up my... Um, Oops. Yeah, the beginning of that. So hopefully I haven't got any other prints in there. No, that's fine. Um, so all I'm going to do is print the employee and it's then going to print the department. So hopefully this will work. Yeah. So it tells me the employee details and department details. So why did I do that? Because it's sort of like I've taken the strict relational database uh, idea where we'd have 
an employee ID, linking to the department ID. And in SQL, we would use a join to put them together to do a better print. We don't have that um, simply in, in Python, but what we do have is the ability not to um, reference the number and then go and look it up in real time, but actually reference the object so we can do it a bit more clearly. So I like this approach um, because it's sort of somewhere between the structure of SQL and also the flexibility of uh, Python, right? Um, and that's what I, I like about um, using a language like Python with objects. You've got more flexibility to actually build it the way your program does. The underlying database, let's assume this information was kept in a, an SQL database, that's going to be rigorous and it's going to have all the right checking and it's going to be uh, following the, 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 the various rules of, of uh, SQL. And, uh, and that's great. And then when you bring it in, the data into your program, because you're only looking at a few records at a time, you're, you've got more flexibility and you build your program around that. So let's just summarize what I've done. I started off with building a, a, a department uh, class with the usual initialization function with a simple print uh, statement. There's nothing fancy about that. I created a few departments for my company. I named them all as simple variables. It could have been a list, could have been others. Then I created my class, my employee class. Again, lots of um, attributes. And I did a print employee that had both the employee details, but also the department um, details, printing those out just to make it a bit easier. Then, and this is where the tricky part is, because I set up here that the department ID was the department ID, why well, should really change that and say, it's not really a department ID now, but it's really a department, department. It's really a department. If I could spell correctly again. Yeah, it's really a department. Um, so I'll depart. Because I've decided not to carry the ID, ID around, but I want to carry the actual object around. And then if I print that out, I, oops, I've got a bit of a mistake there. Um, Probably employee ID. Um, down here. Um, I didn't do it all correct. Um, so now if I should, yeah, that's better. Okay, so instead of using a department ID, I've actually used the department as an object. And I'm finding that easier for me to work with. It doesn't follow the strict SQL. I've sort of modified that, and that's okay, because the database that I'm using, if I was connected to an SQL database, that's got all the rigor, and now we're using classes and objects to, if you like, make our programming a bit easier, and always trying to contain everything together so we define everything we know about employees. Now, again, I've only done an initialization print employee, but you could imagine you could do a payroll you could do lots of methods to do that. Maybe when if there was a raise in salary, you do that as another method, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we could add lots of methods associated with that. Okay, so that's all I wanted to do. Another quick example of using classes and objects. Uh, in this case, I've taken from the rigor of, of a, a, a relational database structure and said, let's make it a bit more flexible using Python because it's easier to program. So I hope you like that. Do practice it. Try and add some more attributes, add some more um, methods. Let me know how you go in the comments. I appreciate that. And uh, have a great day.